Look at this. If you have a sad face, your inverse is going to flip in this direction. Okay, that is if you have a sad face. If you have a happy face, there's my happy face, then your inverse is going to slope in that direction. Do you understand that concept? Sad face, inverse go that way. Happy face, the inverse goes this way. And now, my question to you, is my inverse a function? Is the inverse graph a function? What do you need? What do you need? You need your ruler. You need your ruler. So I want to go check if my inverse is a function. Look at this. I've got my y-axis. I've got my x-axis. This is graph. This mathematics is beautiful. Everything makes sense. I hope it makes sense to you this afternoon. Was that your inverse graph? Yes, because we swapped our x and our y. And we swap the x and the y here. Do you remember this is the point 1 and negative 3? And what was this point now again? Negative 1 and negative 3. Now negative 3 and negative 1. Negative 3 and plus 1. Let's look. Take your ruler. What did we say? We call this the vertical line test. Negative 3 and 1. Negative 3 and negative 1. What are we about to do? We are about to see if this graph is a function. So how do I test if a graph is a function? I am going to do the vertical line test. So everybody put your ruler down. The minute I put this ruler down, I notice something immediately. What do you notice? I notice that my vertical line, which in this case is my ruler, cuts my graph at two places. Oh my goodness, it cuts my graph at two places. Two places every time that you move this ruler, it cuts your graph at two places. Can this be a function? No, it is not a function. Why? Because every x value, every x value can you see it is shared there is one y value this is a y value but it has the same x value that is a y value it has the same x value every x value is shared with a y value i want to write this down for you every x value is shared can you see one y value has more than that x value there is that x value is the same so the y value is different but it has the same x value it is not one to one one to one means one y value one x value one y value one x value one girlfriend one boyfriend one girlfriend one boyfriend but what happens in the inverse graph what happens in the inverse graph two same x value same x value but two different y values that is not a function this y is plus one that x is negative three but this y is negative one and the x is then also negative three they are sharing the same x value can you so we have the vertical line test and it cuts the graph two times if I move that ruler. Now comes the most important question again. I would so much like this inverse to be a function. I want this inverse to be a function. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do for this inverse to be a function? Now look. I have the parabola here. Everybody, can you see? That was our parabola. Can everybody see that? That was our parabola. We used the table method. 
This was our inverse. What did we do for our inverse? We swapped the x and the y around. Now look, is this f a function? Yes, it is, because the line only cuts the graph at one place, one place, one place, one place. Is f inverse a function? Is f inverse a function? What are you guys saying? No, ma'am. It is not a function because the x values are the same for two different y values. The x values are the same. So we say, I want this to be a function. I want the inverse to be a function. So the question asks, what are you going to do to this graph to make the inverse a function? Right, grade 12, if I ask you, what is the domain of this graph? What is the domain of this graph? What are you going to tell me? What is the domain of this graph? X is an element of R. Do you all agree with me? X is an element of R. This is my domain. Can we just look at the domain? X is an element of R. Now, because X is an element of R, that graph is not a function. Now, see if you agree with me. If I take this arm away, if I take this arm away, what am I going to have? I'm taking that arm away and I've just got that part. This year is x is greater or equal to zero. These are all the x's positive. These are positive x values. Do you agree with me, grade 12s? These are positive x values. Come we sketch its inverse. Come we sketch the inverse of that. The inverse of that will go that way. The inverse of this will go that way. My question to you, is the inverse a function now? Is the inverse a function? Ruler. Oh my word. It only cuts it once. 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 Every x has one y value. Every x has one y value. But if I do that, every x will have two y values so what did i do for this inverse to be a function i restricted the domain i made the domain x is greater or equal to naught if i go and i do this this is so awesome i'm restricting the domain again what is my domain here x is smaller or equal to zero. Do you agree? This is my domain. X is smaller or equal to zero. I bet if I ask you, sketch this inverse, you are all going to know what to do now. That is F. That is F inverse. Can we sketch the inverse? Sketch it with me. It is going to be from here, that way. It is going to be there, that way. Is this a function? Is this a function? What do we need? We need the vertical line. Bring out the rulers again. I move it. Oh, again, it only cuts my graph at one place. Every x, one y. Every x, one y. Every x, one y. But if I add the arm up there, if I should do this, is it a function? No, ma'am, because every x has two y values one guy can't have two girlfriends only one only one girlfriend remember that and so what are we going to do with our domain if ever this question is asked in the exam how are you going to restrict the domain what are you going to do to the domain you say x must be less or equal to naught or x must be greater or equal to naught then the inverse is a function. I see somebody saying, ma'am, the square root couldn't be negative. Franzlin, that is Franzlin, that is such a good question. Remember, when we said the square root can't be negative, I took the x away. When I took the x away, you are absolutely correct. It can't be negative. But when you put the x there, we said that 
x is negative. And a negative times a negative makes that square root a positive. And that is the inverse of a parabola. Now, you know what? We are almost finished with what we have planned this afternoon. Can I just do something small? Did the straight line and its inverse, and we sketched it. We did the parabola and its inverse, and we sketched it. If I can just end off with this, but now listen, all of you, grab your pens. Look at my function quickly. I have f of x is equal to a third x squared. Can we recap our lesson for the parabolas? A third x squared. Smiley face or sad face? Smiley face. Why are my arms going to be up? Because that's a plus value. Which method are you going to use? You are going to use the table method. So when you sketch this parabola, everybody knows that your arms are going to go up. You can substitute in the points when you go home this afternoon. Don't go sleep tonight until you've gone through this lesson that I did with you. So you draw your table and you sketch your parabola. Grade 12, do this with me. What is the inverse functions equation? I want to know what is the equation of f inverse. I know you're all saying already, ma'am, interchange x and y. Interchange x and y. So everybody, you are busy working with me. y becomes x. x becomes y. Can I leave my equation like that? Absolutely not. First divide by a third. Remember, if you divide by a third, it is the same as multiplying by three. Dividing by a third is the same as multiplying by three. Can I take the square root on that side? Absolutely. Plus minus the square root of 3x. There's my inverse equation. How is this graph going to look? My arms are going up. The arms are going up, so your graph is going to slope in that direction. Arms going down, graph go in that direction. Sketch it with me. There we go. That is the inverse graph of that. Isn't it just beautiful? Is this green graph a function? What are you going to take out immediately? Your ruler is the green graph a function. Every x, one y. Every x, one y. Take your ruler. I move my ruler. I see immediately that my ruler cuts the green graph twice. 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 So that means one guy has two girlfriends. No ways is that on. So the green graph is not a function. Now you ask, ma'am. How can I make the green graph a function? You take your red graph and you say x must be smaller or equal to naught, or x must be greater or equal to naught. For if x is smaller or equal to naught, you are only going to have that on. And if it's greater or equal to naught, you will only have that on. And then when you move your ruler, you will see that it is a function. What a beautiful graph we worked with this afternoon. We worked with the inverses. X becomes Y. Line of symmetry. Y is equal to X. Y is equal to X. If I draw my Y equal to X there, draw it tonight. And if you fold it, you will see that the two graphs fall on top of each other. Grade 12s, I hope that you all understood this afternoon's lesson. Take your own functions, a half a x squared, minus 4x squared, any function. Change your x and your y. Draw your graph. Swap the points. Smiley face, this way. Unhappy face, that way. And thanks again to all the schools who logged in this afternoon. Do you know I have such admiration for you going on a Sunday to listen to lessons. Guys, you will be successful. You will reap the benefits. It was awesome teaching you. I'll see you again next time when we will be doing the inverse 
of an exponential growth. What's going to happen then? You have to wait for the lesson. It was lovely teaching you. See you again.